Hello, the time has come to talk about two-dimensional Perlin noise. That is not two-dimensional Perlin noise. Right behind me over here is a visual representation of one-dimensional Perlin noise, a kind of one, a graph over time or over some sort of x-axis of noise value, Perlin noise values, of smooth random values. So what I want to talk about in this video coming over here is what does it mean for Perlin noise to suddenly be in two dimensions? So let me draw for you essentially what was happening in that sketch. So this is a graph of Perlin noise in one dimension. And we know that the noise function takes an input, which I was calling, which I called in my previous example, x off, meaning some sort of offset along the x-axis. And the function will return the particular value related to that x offset. So now, even though this is a two-dimensional board, and I am here with you in three dimensions. <laughs> this is a visual representation of one-dimensional values, uh, values in, along one dimension. So now, I need a visual, visual representation of values in two dimensions. So what I'm going to do here is now draw you a grid. And right, ah, oh, this marker is failing me. Let's try the other side. I think I need to like not have gravity in this space, maybe? And then the ink wouldn't drip to the back. I'm trying to like hold it up like this. I need one of those astronaut pens. Anyway, so this is now a two-dimensional grid. What if instead of a particular noise value, let me come back to this. I am going to Staples, and I am buying a box of fresh whiteboard markers as soon as I finish making videos today. Uh, noise. What if I say x off comma y off? What I'm saying here is give me a particular noise value at a particular x location and y location in this space. So in the same way that this looks like a bumpy terrain but it's flattened, you could imagine this being a bumpy terrain that's coming out towards you. Right? There's all of these values. And so this particular value, right? this particular value is similar to the value that comes after it or the value that comes before it. This particular value is similar to all the values that surround it. Right? There's a difference between, again, this is a very kind of like a difficult thing to wrap one's head around. There's a difference between drawing stuff in two dimensions versus pulling values from two dimensions. But what I'm going to do now, I think, is try to demonstrate Perlin noise in two dimensions by doing the most sort of like literal visual representation of this. So what I'm going to do is, um, what I'm going to do is uh, color every single pixel according with a grayscale value according to a Perlin noise value. So let's let's make that happen. <laughs> Hopefully that explained it somewhat. Now I'm coming back over here, and uh, here we go. So let's do some stuff here. Let's actually. Let me, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep this increment variable. I'm going to get rid of this start variable. And I'm going to get rid of a lot of this stuff, actually. But I'm going to keep this outer loop. And what I'm actually going to do, and I, I could do this with pixels. Let's do it with pixels. <laughs> so what I need to say, uh, I'm, I'm going to make the canvas 200 by 200. And then I'm going to say load pixels here in draw. Now. Uh, the way that the pixel array works in P5.js is a little bit tricky, and I have an entire video dedicated to just that. So if you haven't used pixels before in P5.js, go find that video now and then come back. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add two loops, one for the x values, one for the y values. And then I don't need begin shape and end shape. I don't need any of this stuff. I can actually get rid of so much stuff from this example. Then I'm going to say update pixels at the end. And now what I need to do is I need to calculate an index, which is x plus y times, this is what I cover in the other video, x plus y times width times 4. And then I want to say pixels that index equals 255. And then that's the red value. This is the green value. This is the blue value. And I'm going to say plus 0, just so you see, plus 3. And this is the alpha value. So if I do this, 
I should just see, ah, okay. So what just happened here? Something weird just happened. It so happens that my machine is actually a high density display. It's a Mac Retina screen. And so the way high density displays work is they actually pack four pixels in for every pixel. And I don't want to get lost in the discussion of that, but I can kind of fix this issue just by saying pixel density. I can turn off the sort of high densityness of the display by just saying pixel density one one pixel per pixel, and now you can see, there we go. So let's look at this now, and let's say I say random, for each pixel I'm gonna give random value. I'm gonna uh, pick a uh, brightness, which is a random value, r, whoops, ah, r, r. What? Adam is auto-completing me like I'm a crazy person. Okay, so you can see, there we go. We've got, you know, back in olden times, when you might have used something called a television, the telly, um, and you couldn't get your antenna to connect to anything, you would see this kind of noise, static, randomness. That's what it looks like. Every single pixel is some, uh, is a random grayscale value between zero and uh, 255. <laughs> this is making me feel crazy. So now what I want to do, you can see that there's no relationship between any pixel and the pixel next to it. And I, can, I could say no loop, just so we could take a closer look at this. And you can see it's you know, zoomed in. You can see every pixel is just sort of a random value with no relationship. So now, what if I want to use Perlin noise? So let's one dimensional Perlin noise for a second. What if I were just to say, I have a global, I have a variable called x off. And what I'm actually going to do for every pixel is take a noise value at x off and multiply it by 255. You can see now every single pixel gets a single noise value from time zero in one dimensional noise. Every single pixel now has this color. Now what if I start marching through the one-dimensional noise? And I were to say, OK, for every pixel, change x off by some amount. It's kind of interesting. I get this sort of like weird streak. Why do I get this weird, crazy streak? Well, let's think about it. First of all, why is it going down? Shouldn't it go across? Let's look at those loops again. The inner loop is the y loop. So actually, for every x, I'm doing all the y pixels. Let me move y to the outer loop. Look, those streaks are going across. What's happening here is that, and we can kind of zoom in here for a second, right? Every pixel is changing ever so slightly according to Perlin noise, white to gray to gray. And then when it gets to the end, look at the color that's over here. It's hard for you to see, but the color that's over here just comes right back and picks up in the next row. So in the grid, right, if I have one dimensional Perlin noise values, I'm getting a variety of continuously smooth numbers. But then the one that is here, it's similar not to what's above it. It's, this one is similar to what's before and after, but has no relationship to what's below. So what I actually want to do is give it also, give Perlin noise. This is where I want to have the values. I don't want to visualize in two dimensions one-dimensional Perlin noise. I want to visualize two-dimensional Perlin noise. So if I come over here now, and I were to say, let me also have a Y offset. Now, this is a little bit strange. Now, where do I initialize these? So the Y offset, right? If I'm looping like this, X offset is going up, 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 up. Then X offset should reset, and Y offset should go up by one. Up, 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 up. X offset reset, Y offset goes up by one. So what I actually need to do is X offset needs to be initialized here. Because for every single row, I want to restart X offset back at zero. And then I want noise, and then I want noise of X offset, Y offset, and then after every single row, after every single inner loop, I want the y offset to go up. And I, I forgot I have a variable called increment. So let me just add that in here. And I'm going to run this again. And now look what I've got here. I've got something that appears rather cloudy. 
Why? Because pixels are similar to the pixels around it. It's very much like blurring an image. Actually, if I took that random snow, that random static, and blurred it over and over, blur, 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 that's that, like that cosine interpolation function that I referred to all the way back about how the Perlin noise algorithm was generated in the first place. So a blur, this sort of blur convolution, I can't believe I'm using a technical jargon, <laughs> this blur convolution meaning a way of like mixing pixels together, but this blur thing is very similar to sort of smoothing out that randomness, averaging. So I could do things, by the way, to like increment is 0.1. Oh, and it's not looping. So let me turn loop back on. And let me make the increment bigger. Right? You can see what that looks like with a bigger increment. There's more changes. I could make the increment something even smaller. And you can see how, how this sort of noise, this noise field appears. So this is a literal visualization of the two-dimensional of those of the two-dimensional Perlin noise values. And you know, as you might imagine, you could take those values and map them to lots of other things, like bumpy terrain or a flow field, which is the thing that I'm ultimately going to get to in the next particular video. So hopefully this helps you understand a bit more about how the Perlin noise two-dimensional two-dimensional noise works. And, and I'm going to do some more of it in the next video to make a flow field.